Well, our title tonight is Just Keep Going. When you feel like giving up, just keep going. Never give up. Never give in. Never quit. Just keep going. It has been well said that winners never quit and quitters never win because they just keep going. It has also been said that we're too near the cross, to, to near, too near the crown to lay down the cross. We must just keep going. As we re- near the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I believe He's coming soon, sticking with the stuff is even more needful. It is even more imperative that we just keep going. There are too many who are raising the white flag. There are too many who are giving in. And giving up. In Galatians 6 9, we are given a wonderful promise. It is a promise that has often encouraged my fainting heart. It is a promise to sail on and to fight one more round and to never quit and to just keep going. It is a promise that describes the condition in which many can find themselves and yet it beckons them. To just keep going one more round. Just keep going one more day. Just keep going one more month. Just keep going. Paul in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 is speaking to the laborer who is discouraged. He is a discouraged worker. If you read the text with me there. It says in Galatians 6, 9, Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. I'm speaking to the one tonight who is discouraged. And we can be discouraged for all kinds of reasons. But in our discouragement, I want to remind you of the promise of Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Paul admonishes us, do not be weary, faint not. His words suggest that those in God's work can become weary, can become tired. The word weary was used of a husband who was tempted to quit because he was tired of the long, hard, arduous labor of his day. The word faint, not, is used of reapers overcome by heat and by toil in the heat of the day. Paul is describing a worker who is discouraged and ready to give up and ready to quit. Have you ever found yourself weary? Have you ever found yourself ready to just throw in the towel and quit? If you haven't, you're rare indeed. What worker hasn't been discouraged in their work? And one has said, we do not get tired of the work, but we do get tired in the work. Every preacher, teacher, soul winner, youth leader, missionary, evangelist, anybody else involved in the work of God will tell you there have been times when they have been discouraged in the work. Though they love the work, though they labor tirelessly in the work, they just come to a point when they just feel like I can't go on one more day. All of us experience weariness. Over the years I found that discouragement in the work of God has at least two sources. Oftentimes the worker is discouraged by what is happening. Now what I mean by that is by what's going on in your life. For example, opposition. As we face opposition you become weary in the work. Many a pastor with a heart for God and souls of men has been discouraged by petty and carnal ways. Some people, some people act, even in the body of Christ. Have you ever found yourself over the top, on fire about God and His work? And then the actions and attitudes of other believers pours cold water 
on your dream. Cold water on your vision. Because somebody says something or does something in just a way that discourages you, you become discouraged in the work. Souls hang in the balance, we think. And we spend hours discussing silly stuff that in the eternal scheme of things really does not matter. I wonder how many hours have been wasted around the study of God's Word in a Sunday school class and we spend hours talking about the politics of the day or the sporting event of the day and we neglect the eternal things of God. On the other, th- other hand, one can be facing serious physical problems. When one has the heart for God and His work, and yet we're unable to do what we want to do because of physical problems, it can be discouraging. I remember a few years ago, hot heart for God, and I was going like crazy, and I was burning the candle at both ends. And suddenly, I experienced a physical problem. I broke or dislocated 12 bones in my right foot. As a result of that, I was physically unable to do all that I wanted to do. And because of that, I was discouraged. I want you to know that sometimes we get discouraged because we cannot do what we used to. I'm speaking to the senior saint out there who used to be able to do all kinds of things. But now you're discouraged because you can't do all you used to. Years ago, I heard a message by Dr. Vance Havner. He preached a message entitled, Home Before Dark. The darkness he spoke of was such things as as failing God. He didn't want to disgrace God's name in his ministry. He'd rather, God, please just take me home. Take me on home before I would ever bring disgrace and darkness of failing you and ruining the witness that you've given to me. Another darkness he spoke of was getting to the place where he could lose his mind or get physically to a place where he could no longer preach, write, or serve God. And he said, boy, I tell you, I would rather the Lord take me home than to go to such a place physically. So what if one could not preach? What if one could not sing? What if one could not teach or serve God because their hell failed? If a fire is burning in one's heart and soul to preach, sing, serve God, and yet they are confined to a bed by a body, that will not allow them to do that as long as they can. It can be very discouraging. Physical problems can be a source of discouragement. Along with opposition and physical problems, I could speak of adversity. I could speak of persecution. I could speak of a virus that keeps the church of God from meeting together for periods of time. These things happen and they cause discouragement. But also we can be discouraged by what is not happening. Whereas the worker of God's field can be discouraged by what is happening. Likewise, what is not going on. When we're serving God and we want to see God move and we want to see God blessed and we want to see souls saved and we want to see the glory of God poured out and just nothing happens. For a pastor to preach Sunday after Sunday and the altars are barren, the baptism waters are unstirred, no one gets saved, the church doesn't grow, it can be discouraging. When a Sunday school teacher faithfully studies their lesson and presents the Word of God best they know how, and it seems seems that no one is listening, it can be discouraging. We see the church down the road booming. We see the classroom down the hall thriving. And we wonder why. Why, God, am I, I'm being faithful. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm preparing. I'm, I'm lifting up my class in prayer. I'm, I'm doing everything I can, and yet it seems to be going nowhere. God, why? The missionary left everything to obey God's call. 
He goes and he serves. And for years and years and years, he faithfully shares the gospel. And yet just a very few people get saved. Oh yeah, we can get discouraged in the work because not only of what we see happening that's bad, but we don't see anything good happening at that moment. There is the discouraged worker who is weary and fainting. And I want us to also notice, notice in that text, he's speaking to a devoted worker. He says there in the text, do not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we just simply do not lose heart. He's speaking to that worker who is, who is well-doing, but he's growing weary in the work. In those two words, we see a devoted worker who is committed to God's work. He understands that this is the work given by God. The work of God is what he or she is doing. The word speaks of more and more than, more than just activity or being busy. The work, the work of the worker is more than just doing something. It is doing something to the glory of God. The worker is doing the thing that God has appointed them to do. He's not just doing something, he's doing the will of God. He's not just going through the motions, he's doing what God has called them to do. Behind the word is the idea of being appointed. The word is translated fulfill on three different occasions in the Bible. In Mark 3, 14, the word is translated ordained. He ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. This doing is more than just doing something. It is doing the work of God that God has ordained for that person to do. What I'm saying is there is a work that every believer can do and should do and is called to do and that God has purposed them to do. One might not be able to preach or teach or go to the mission field. However, every believer has a work to do. It is the work that God wants to do with them, by them, and through them. As a pastor, on occasion someone comes to me and says, Preacher, give me something to do. I, I always ask this question, what is it? That God has given you a burden for. What group of people are you called to minister to? Brother J.R. is here tonight. And I can just tell that J.R. has a passion to minister to children. If Shauna were here tonight, I can tell there's a passion for, for ministering to children in their lives. You see, God's purpose bursts in our hearts a passion to do what He has called us to do. There is God's will and God's place of service for every believer. And blessed is the person who has found their place in God's work. The work that the worker does is more than just working. It is doing what God has called them to do. And so the word of God says, do not grow weary in the work that God has called you to do, don't get discouraged. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Be faithful to the God who is faithful to the end. Just simply don't quit. Don't give up. Just keep going. Do you know what God's will is for your life? I think we spoke about it a couple weeks ago. I know the number one thing that he wants from us is to know him. To know him personally, know him intimately, to know and understand the power of his resurrection. Do you know what it is that he wants you to be doing? He wants you to be plugging into your local church, serving for his glory, doing what he has called you to do. He has given you a passion for something. Embrace that passion and do it and do it for the glory of God and just keep going. When the times get tough, when the wind seems to beat against your sail, just keep going. Furthermore, there is the work given to God and that is the idea that, that I'm doing it, doing it well. I'm not just going through the motions of serving God, but I am giving God my absolute best 
I am serving him with all that I have. It's interesting, the words well-doing are often connected to the will of God. If you read with me in 1 Peter 2 and verse 15, it says this. It says, for this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. In 1 Peter 3, 17, For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. And then in 1 Peter 4, 19, Therefore let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to Him in doing good as to a faithful Creator. Doing the will of God deserves giving our very best and our very all. We are to do the will of God and do it well. If anything, if there's anything in life that is worth doing well, it is the will of God. I read a story about a man that, named Ellie Maxwell. He was the architect of the Brooklyn Bridge. During the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, he was injured and confined to his bed. And so each day, his wife would carry the instructions to the workers. When the mighty and magnificent Brooklyn Bridge was completed, he was carried out. The architect of the bridge was carried out to look at it. As his eyes scanned every square inch, he looked up and he cried out, It's just like the plan. It's just like the plan. It's just what I designed. Can I tell you that every life ought to look like God's plan for it. Every life ought to look like God's purpose for it. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And we're not to willy-nilly go about doing whatever. We are to do the will of God for our lives. We are to not ever quit. We are to keep going. We are to walk in that will. Can you look at, can you look at your work and say, it's just like God intended? Can you look at your life and say, this is the will of God. I have lived out the will of God for my life. Are you doing God's will well doing? Are you doing God's work with well-doing? Are you doing it with all that you have and all that you are? There's a blessed promise given to those who do their best and give their best. The devoted worker is given the promise that in time that he will be a delighted worker. Look at point number three. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, listen to this. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. It's easy to get discouraged in our work. We become weary, we faint, we get tired. There are times we want to give in and give up. And we want to say, I just can't go one more day. However, we are promised that if we do our work with well-doing, there will come a time when we shall reap. We must keep going. We must keep going. When discouraging things happen to us, we must keep going. When everything seems like it's coming against us, we must keep going because of that promise in due season. If we just keep going in due season, the Bible says we will reap. So when it seems like nothing is happening, nothing is going on, the promise is that if we will keep on, keeping on, keep going in due season, we shall reap if we do not quit. I confess to you that this is a promise that has been a fitting word in my life in times of discouragement. There are moments, there are days when I wake up really early and I, I, I am just so overwhelmed with discouragement, I'm so overwhelmed with obstacles and opposition, that I, I'm so overwhelmed, but it seems like the, the wind is blowing against my sails rather than for it. It seems like everywhere I turn, there is a fight, there is a struggle, there is a problem. And in those moments, I hang on to this promise, promise of God's Word. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Don't lose heart. For in due season, we're going to reap 
if we just keep going. There will be a personal time of reaping. The word do is translated 48 times as his own, their own, 13 times, privately eight times, as your own six times. It is a word that speaks that, of that which pertains to one personally. In other words, every worker is promised a personal time of reaping that God is going to bless his laborers God is going to bless that mom and dad who are faithful that grandma and grandpa who are faithful that servant of God Sunday school teacher who is faithful God is going to bless that if you keep on going the promise is that you will personally reap if you keep going you're going to personally reap the benefit of that if the discouraged preacher will keep on preaching the word, stay with the Bible, even when it seems everything else is going another route, trading in the old paths for the newer and contemporary paths, there will come a day when he shall reap a reward. Now listen, so that means that every morning if you're discouraged, you've got to get up and do what God's called you to do. For me as a pastor, I get up and i got to get up and go try to win somebody to Jesus. Go try to love somebody. Go try to encourage somebody. He said, Brother Clint, what if you don't feel encouraged yourself? Listen, friend, encouragement comes when you encourage others. Miss Judy is here tonight. She's sitting over here, been playing the piano for us, and she'll tell you that she'll tell you that even when she is feeling down and when she goes in and ministers to those folks and loves on those folks in that nursing home, not only does it encourage them, it encourages her heart. Friend, there is, there is joy in the journey when you are living it for Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you that you're going to experience personal reaping if you will just keep going. But there is a proper time for reaping. You know, we, we'd like for all that reaping to take place right now. I'd like for everything good to just pour into my life right now and just be showered with it, smothered with it, drowned with all that good stuff. But you know the Bible says there in verse 9 that it comes in due season. When one, so when one sows, they cannot expect, expect to reap next day, next week, next month. Friend, you got to sow faithfully day after day after day like that old farmer out there. He plows, he, he weeds, he does all that because one day he knows that a harvest will come. It's so easy to get discouraged when you're sweating in the field and you're pulling up weeds. It's so easy to get discouraged when you're out there and you're, you're eating dust because of that plow and that disc. It's so easy to get discouraged when you look out there and nothing happens. But then all of a sudden you see that green shoot begin to grow. And you know something good's on the way. Something good's on the way. I think about a great missionary named Adoniram Judson. He went to what was then known as Burma. There was not a known Christian in that land of millions of people. Not a single one. Isn't that incredible? And there were no friends. He went there all alone with his family. Robber infested, idolatry infected, iniquity filled land. The baby that was born to he and his wife was only with them for a temporary time. For eight months old, he buried Roger William Judson, his son, under a mango tree. He lost his child. And that would just be the first of many of the heartaches and hurts that he would experience in serving there in Burma. Perhaps his greatest burden was this. There were no converts. It would be six long, soul-crushing, heartbreaking years before he saw one person receive Jesus Christ as Savior. Now, I want to try to paint that picture. Here is a man who left everything with his family. He went to this land that he knew not of because he loved the people of Burma. He poured love into them. And it didn't seem to make a difference. His, only, his son died. And still no one cared. 
There he was, he and his wife, serving God faithfully for six years. And no one, no one, no one responded to their message. After six long, hard, devoted years, one man came to Christ. Here's what Judson jotted in his journal. Oh, may it prove to be the beginning of a series of baptisms in the Burman Empire which shall continue in an uninterrupted success to the end of age. It did prove to begin the beginning, be the beginning of a great work. On April 12, 1850, at the age of 62, Judson died. Except for a few months when he returned to America after 34 years, Judson spent 30 years eight years in Burma. Although he had waited six years for his first convert, sometime after his death a government survey recorded 210,000 born-again Christians in Burma. One out of every eight of their citizens was born again by the power of God because one man and his family would not quit and just kept going faithfully in the work and let us not grow weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart too often we focus on the triumph without thinking too much about the tears too often we we don't think about the toil and the tears and the trouble we just see the triumph of the servant of God in some cases, the worker may never realize or see the harvest in his or her lifetime. When you don't feel like your preaching is getting through, what do you do? You keep on preaching. When you don't feel like your church, church is going anywhere, what do you do? You keep on working. When you don't feel like you're making a difference in the life of your child, what do you do? You just keep on sowing the seed of the gospel. For in due season you will reap if you do not lose heart. When you don't feel like anything is happening or anything is going on in your life, what do you do? You faith it, my friend. You serve God faithfully. You just keep going. Somewhere, at some time, in due season, we shall reap if we just keep going. If you're discouraged tonight, can I tell you to be devoted? Be a devoted worker in the kingdom of God. Be a devoted servant. Be a devoted mother. Be a devoted dad. Be a devoted teenager. Be devoted to the work of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. And I want to tell you something. In due season, in due season, you're going to reap. Just don't lose heart. Our God is faithful. Stay faithful to Him. Can I pray with you tonight? Father, we love you. And I just pray right now that you will help us to just keep going. When we feel like giving up, when we feel like throwing in the towel, when we feel like we can't go one more day, when we feel like we can't lift our arms to guard ourselves from one more punch, Father, in those moments, help us to be faithful and just keep going. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. I love you.